Well, hello, friends. It's Monday. We're starting the week off together in the Word. You know, I want to say a special thank you to my friend Brett Golson. It's just such a great privilege to know someone who's so committed to not just understanding the Word himself, but to helping to convey the truth of God's Word to those who are under his teaching. He's also an instructor of future teachers. He's equipping the young men who are going to stand in the pulpits in the coming days ahead and preach the Word of God in what is clear to be, what is sure to be, a continuing uh, decline of the environment and the culture as far as willing to receive the Word of God. So I'm thankful for Brett, and I'm thankful for all the investments he makes, especially when he comes to us and he invests the Word of God into our faith family. So thanks so much for that. So now it's time for us to invest, make personal investments when we talk about the Word of God. And congratulations, by the way, we're finishing up another book, the book of Leviticus. And I know you're probably thinking, thank goodness. You know, that was difficult. Hopefully it wasn't too difficult and we were able to discern some things regarding what God would have us to understand from his word as found in Leviticus. And we're transitioning into the next book, which is the book of Numbers. Today we're looking at chapter 1. And it's a census that's being taken, as you'll begin to see throughout the book, that the reason why the book of Numbers has that name is because we have a census taken, and Numbers seem to focus, you know, be a feature of what's going on in the initial phase of, or the initial chapters of the book of Numbers. I want to look at verses 44 through 46 and then put them into the context of God's promise to Abraham. These are the men Moses and Aaron registered with the assistance of the 12 leaders of Israel. Each represented his ancestral family. So all the Israelites 20 years old or more, everyone who could serve in Israel's army was registered, were registered by their ancestral families. All those registered numbered 603,550. So a quick reminder, if you keep reading, we were told that the Levites were not registered in that. So you've got one clan out of those that was not registered. Uh, so that number is going to be a little bit more in terms of the 20-year-old and older adults that are present here. But let's think about this for a moment. If we go back to the book of Exodus chapter 1, we're told that in the number of, of people who came down with Jacob to Egypt was 70. Joseph was already there with his, his, his uh, wife and their children. So, you know, the, the book of Acts says there were 75. Stephen says that. There were 75. So we're, start, we're starting off with about 70, 75 people. Well, when we get to the end of their time in Egypt, we're told they're there for 430 years. Most scholars believe that the 30 represents that initial time when Joseph was there. Uh, the king was favorable to the people. You know, he was being, um, the, the Israel had free reign. They were moving there, you know, and so that was that 30 years. And then the 400 years was when the, the uh, oppression began. But let's say we got, you know, four centuries here uh, of continuing to multiply and grow so that when they come out of Egypt, they're numbering 20 years and older, 603,550. Now, that's a big number. But then let's add to that the fact that just about all these would have been married because they're 20 years and older. So we can double that. So now we're in the neighborhood of what, 1.2, uh, 1.2, 100 you know, million or a little more, um, you know, uh, the size of the population. And of course, because they're 20 and older, they would have already had families because, you know, being married early, they begin to, you know, have children quickly. And so it would be a very conservative number to, to apply, apply two to each family. So we're adding double again that. So we're in a neighborhood of almost 3 million people, you know, 1.3, you know, 2.3, 2.4 million people that are now, now called Israel. Friends, that's amazing to think that, you know, the, the multiplication happens so rapidly and that even in oppression, God continued to bless them in multiplication. And now what entered into Egypt is 70, 75 adding in Joseph, coming out of Egypt is now nearly 2.3, 2.4, two 2.5 million people. That's a population. That's, you know, roughly the size of the state of Mississippi in terms of population. And it just shows us that God was indeed faithful to his promise. You go back to Genesis chapter 12, God promises to multiply and make a great nation of Abraham. You come on to chapter 15, God promising an heir again, and God says, hey, go outside, look up. If you can number the stars, then you'll be able to number the people. They're going to come out of you through your seed. Again, he makes a promise. In that case, he says, if you can number the sand on the seashore, you can number the people that were going to be multiplied through your seed. 
God was being faithful to his promise, and we now have an objective measure of that in, in terms of those 20 years old and older. It's just a reminder that when God makes a promise, God will be faithful to honor his promise. He will honor his word. And so let that encourage us today, that as we think about the promises that God makes to us in the New Testament, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you, I am with you always, even in the age you know, all power and authority has been given to me. He promises to give us his spirit. All these different promises that God makes to us for his kingdom purpose, he will indeed keep those promises and we will be the benefactors. We will be the beneficiaries of that. Despite what may be going on, remember, this happened during oppression. This happened while they were slaves. And yet God multiplied them exponentially according to his promise. That means that even when things aren't going well, even when it doesn't seem like uh, what's happening around us is conducive to a blessing uh, of God, that, that doesn't control it. That doesn't manipulate it. God is still faithful. And so today, I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know what circumstances have changed for you or what circumstances have deteriorated for you. But I know this. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And if the, if the promises he made in his word, he will keep those promises. And perhaps he's leading you in a specific season of your life according to his will as revealed in his word and through prayer. And, but yet you're discouraged because it doesn't seem like you're getting positive results. Don't get discouraged and don't give up. Stay committed, stay focused, and trust God to bring about his results in his timing for his purpose. Well, friends, thanks for starting the week off in the Word of God. Thanks for getting into the Word so that the Word gets into us. Because it's by that that we're transformed. It's by being in His Word and enjoying communion with Him continually that we enjoy His rest. And when we're resting comfortably in the purpose and the power of God, we're able to then go out and live sent.